Hi everyone. So welcome back to yet another session with me on continuing the discussion with contraceptive agents. So after having discussed on an important type of contraceptive method in our last session that was OC pills, today we have with us yet another widely used method of contraception, antara. That is depoprovera as they call it, or what we also call as just DMPA. So this is what we get inside that box. So this is a type of progesterone containing intramuscular parenteral uh, contraceptive agent. It contains metroxy progesterone acetate. You could see over here it is written on the box over here. You could see it contains metroxy progesterone acetate. Now in the last lecture we have discussed that there are various generations of progesterone. So this is a type of type 1 or first category or uh, first generation progesterone that we have metroxy progesterone acetate. It also comes in the form of uh, tablets that we have to take daily but uh, this is preferred because compliance is never an issue with this one why do i say so because this the dose that is present in this is um, i am not sure if you'll be able to read but it is given over here the dose that is present in this is going to be 150 milligram and that 150 milligram of dose lasts for three months 12 weeks in your body and it provides adequate contraception now what do they do this is an aqueous suspension you can see that uh, you can see at the bottom there is a suspension you can see that has settled this suspension has to be shaken and it has to be loaded inside this this is a syringe that they give and uh, once you load it inside that you have to give it intramuscularly it is preferably given in the gluteus maximus it can be a little painful while you are giving it but uh, once you have given it it's a depot preparation so it stays there for three months and the mechanism of action of it is going to be inhibition of ovulation by the high amounts of progesterone that it secretes so it just disrupts the FSH and LH secretion now what are the other effects now we have already uh, learned about the effects of progesterone in terms of contraception so it also helps in thickening the cervical mucus which prevents the penetration of sperms and their entry into the uterus it also reduces the tubal motility so fertilization is prevented and also even if the fertilization has occurred then the embryo for it to move and come to the uterus that is prevented by decrease in the tubal motility even if it manages to come to the uterus progesterone is going to lead to endometrial atrophy so it is going to keep the endometrium out of phase or basically non-conducive to uh, or for implantation so multiple effects but the most important the primary effect is going to be inhibition of ovulation an excellent method that it works now how often and how long can you use it for the thing is that most of the studies have shown that it is only safe to be used for a maximum period of two years so two years means if i'm using it every three months then four times a year eight times so basically eight injections over two years why is there this restriction that has come to the fore or has come to notice? The reason is that they have shown that this not only increases the weight of women, they say that there is an increase in, there is a significant increase in weight, but it also leads to bone density loss. That bone density loss is a very significant factor here. This can lead to osteoporotic fractures in women, which is why studies are not yet supporting its use longer than two years. So this is a good enough, not an ideal, but a good enough drug for spacing out pregnancies for at least two years. Who all are the candidates? The best candidates for this are the ones who have contraindications to estrogen when they are given in the form of OC pills. So who are those patients? Ones who smoke. So actively smoking women in whom you cannot be giving estrogen as it leads to deep vein thrombosis, hypercoagulability. You can give this in women who have uh, hepatic disorders because uh, this is not going to affect your liver. You can give it in obese women. You can also give it in postpartum women. Although there is a theoretical risk, they say that if you are giving, I mean, what happens after delivery? There is a progesterone withdrawal from your body after the placenta is delivered. So by giving external progesterone in the form of DMP, DMPA, it can lead to uh, the physiological increase in prolactin, which is required for uh, lactation. That can be prevented. So they say that there is a theoretical risk of reduction in lactation, but studies have not yet supported that. But many people do give it immediately postpartum period mein, um, safe hai, not an issue with that apart from that uh, women who have uh, thrombophilia thrombophilia is like uh, lead in 5 mutation antithrombin deficiency protein cns deficiency or APLA syndrome the ones who cannot be given estrogen as it can lead to deep vein thrombosis this is an ideal drug that can be given to them this is not going to lead to any form of uh, hypercoagulability apart from that uh, what do i 
see as a side effect of this the most common and the most distressing side effect is that once i give this these women often end up having irregular bleeding so they might randomly have bleeding at uh, two months or one month after administering it it is going to be scanty but it can be persistent rose ek ek drop jayega there will be spotting every day and uh, what do you do for that and why does this happen the reason is that whenever you are giving this progesterone though it causes endometrial hypertrophy uh, there can be few patches of endometrium that are left behind that do not undergo that and they keep on bleeding over time so one is this so how can you prevent this or how can you rather than prevent how can you treat this you cannot prevent it the problem with this is that once you give it you cannot reverse its effects for at least three months it will take at least three months for the side effect to go down because there is no way i can remove this from her body once it has been given to her so how can i treat it now this is a progesterone that has been given in high concentration so the first modality that i have at my hand is to give an anti progesterone which is mifepristone so we can give mifepristone giving mifepristone will temporarily for a while reduce the progesterone activity in the body and the endometrial atrophy which had occurred will be reversed temporarily to aid it or to help along with it we shall also give ethanol estradiol bahar se without progesterone only estradiol or basically just estrogen so that the endometrial thickness is increased and then we'll uh, after withholding endometrium uh, after withholding estrogen and uh, mifepristone the action of uh, with this progesterone dmp which is already inside her will take over and there will be a much more uniform thinning of the endometrium and hence the irregular bleeding can be treated so mifepristone and ethanol estradiol given together one more thing that we can do is there is a drug antibiotic that we commonly use in leptospirosis that is doxycycline now doxycycline apart from its um, antibiotic usage it also affects the metallic matrix metalloproteinase matrix that is present now this can inhibit doxycycline can inhibit this endometrial matrix metalloproteinase and uh, once that is done it will reduce the amount of bleeding so doxycycline is also one of the drugs that can be given for this irregular menses a lot of people tend to give oc pills to these women i don't believe there is any point of giving oc pills because you are again giving progesterone in the form of oc pills so there won't be much of an effect so avoid giving oc pills to treat the irregular bleeding that occurs with it try going ahead with mifepristone and ethanol estradiol or if you can give doxycycline in much reduced doses we don't get it in india usually it is 20 mg so that is it about this good drug though not the best that we have but it's a good drug that we can give and um, a drug that will have to be repeated every 3 months the female has to keep on coming back to me every 3 months uh, one more question that can be asked is uh, how long does it take for fertility to return after this has been administered so if i have administered it just once it takes somewhere along 6 months to 9 months for the fertility to return if you have given multiple doses over a period of time maybe you have been taking it for the last 1 year or 2 years then it might take a little longer maybe it can take up to 9 months to even a year for your fertility to return so that is something that you need to take care of that you need to tell her that the return to fertility the return to regular menses can be delayed as long as 6 to 9 months at least and uh, that is it about progesterone in whom would you not give it breast cancer patients in whom uh, there is progesterone receptor positive patients that is one of the biggest contraindications so that is it about this one any advances in this this is a very old drug yes there is one advancement that we have gotten is a subcutaneous form of dmpa which you give in the dose of just 104 mg instead of this 150 you give it subcutaneously it also has an action of around 12 to 13 weeks and it is given subcutaneously and uh, it has similar mechanism of action nothing different it is just a lower dose 30% lower dose 104 mg that you can give you call it subcutaneous depoprovera so that is it about antara dmpa depo medroxy progesterone acetate a first generation intramuscular long acting contraceptive agent a good agent not an ideal one it has its own side effects we shall be trying to reach out to a even better and even better contraceptive in the next video thank you